All right, guys. Hey, how's it going? So today uh, we're going to be talking about two things, two topics today, two for the price of one. We're going to go through and we're going to talk about ionic structures and we're going to talk about metallic structures. For my students, that means that uh, there's going to be a couple of different assignments on the website. We just started getting back into virtual school. So uh, all of the assignments on the uh, AP website are going to be my own assignments. Just you, you just have to you just have to do them. I'm not going to actually go through and grade them. I just want you to go through and actually practice. Completion grades. We're going to go through and talk about the structure of ionic solids and metals and alloys. So these two things. What exactly is it that we're going to need to know for ionic solids? Uh, one, uh, the cation anion uh, arranged in a systematic 3D array. This is the lattice structure. Also kind of a little bit about uh, why they actually end up that way. What are What's the energy dynamics involved in that? Why uh, are they so strong? Then we're going to talk about metals and alloys. The big thing here is those little interstitial spaces. Interstitial. Interstitial is a word that you may or may not know. Uh, interstitial just essentially means the in-between spaces. And we'll get into that a little bit. The things that exist in between in these interstitial spaces can change the properties of the metal. Uh, this is where we get the term alloy from. So an alloy is not just a pure metal, but it's a mixture of metals that have, are all uh, together, uh, and sometimes nonmetals. This is going to be an example of one of those lattice structures. If you can see, you have a positive cation and a negative anion, and they kind of go back and forth. So it's positive, negative, positive, positive, negative, positive, positive, negative, positive, and so on and so forth. Uh, and it makes this little rectangular uh, structure. So anytime that you have this structure, you can see that, let's take this, this guy right here in the center. Take this guy. If you see what he is actually interacting with is negative, 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 negative. So this positive has has six negative charges all around him uh, because he's trying to attract all of them in. Uh, but he, he's getting pulled in those six different directions. So he's kind of stuck right there. Uh, additionally, uh, this sodium on the corner here, if I want to draw a diagonal line, is repelling this middle sodium. So we have kind of uh, this situation where we are going to be repelling and attracting the same or different, respectively, uh, types of ions. And when we do that, we end up with a structure that looks like this. We want to keep the negatives close to the positives, but keep the positives far away from each other. There's that. Just as a quick reminder on what ionic bonds actually look like. So positives are going to repel each other. Negatives are going to repel each other. But the positive and negatives are going to attract one another, which is why we end up with a, a structure like this. Some properties here. Uh, we already talked before about why ionic bonds are so brittle. These guys are very, very stable. And the reason why they're stable is because of, like I said before, those Coulomb uh, uh, forces, the uh, Coulombic forces, the uh, Coulomb's law. So think about it in terms of charge and think about it in terms of distance. These guys are very close together. So the distance is very small and there it's a full negative charge and a full positive charge, which means that these guys are going to have a lot of attraction together. Those forces are going to be pretty strong. What are some things that can change that? Well, anything that can change the distance between these guys and anything that can change the charge of these guys. So what do I mean by changing the charge? I don't necessarily mean changing the, the charge, like I can't change a sodium from a plus one to a plus two. But if I switch out a sodium for a magnesium, magnesium is going to have a two plus charge. If I had magnesium chloride as opposed to sodium chloride, then that plus two charge is going to have uh, more of an attractive force on all of these positive charges. So that can go through and change things. So the bigger the charge difference between the two ions, then the more of an attractive force you're going to have. And what was the other thing? So you have charge and you also have distance. 
So how can we make these things be further or closer together? And we can do that by changing the atomic radius of these guys. So if we have something um, really big, like strontium or something like that, compared to sodium, then um, let's go cesium. That's still that's still a good one. So cesium compared to sodium is going to be much bigger which is going to force all of these guys apart which is going to open up these little spaces in between so it's going to increase the these distances so if you have an increase of distance between the different uh different particles then you're going to have a change in that coulombic forces and then it's going to change your energy that is uh, keeping the this lattice structure together. Uh, on top of that, remember these guys are also very easily soluble. I talked about that in the last video, but also when they do dissolve in water, they're going to be very conductive. They're going to have a bunch of free charges flowing around. That's one thing that you need to remember is that if you have free moving charges, then that will allow uh, electricity to, to flow. So con uh, you can conduct them. So free moving charges. If a, uh, you have a solid salt, solid ionic compound, these guys are not free moving. So even though they are charges, they are not free moving. So they will not be conducting electricity. But if you dissolve these guys, now these guys are moving all around. Now these guys are gonna be moving all around. And we uh, can then say that they are, um, they are conductive at that point. So metallic bonds, metallic bonds, like we said before, it's very malleable. We can move them. It's not brittle like that ionic compound. Um, these guys are very conductive because they have those free moving electrons, free delocalized electrons. These guys are pretty far apart. Like I said, one of the reasons why it's kind of a, one of the weaker uh, energies. So these guys are so far apart that sometimes other atoms can actually slip in to these interstitial spaces. So we can have a situation like this, where we have uh, a steel, so this is iron atoms, and then in between, in the interstitial spaces, we have carbon atoms stuck there. Now, what would this do to the material? So again, let's kind of see if it would make it, uh, let's say, we want to bend this material. So if I again wanted to put a force here and push upward, uh, we move all of these guys. These guys can't flow anymore. They can't get, they can't push upward as easily. You kind of think of it like um, gears in a clock. These guys are, these little carbon atoms are gumming things up. They're preventing a smooth flow between here. And if we did try to do that, uh, it would force these atoms so far apart that those forces that are already kind of weak are going to just snap and break. So the more carbon atoms you have in interstitial spaces, the more brittle a metal is going to be. Uh, so this is one type of alloy where you throw in a very small molecule or a very small atom into these interstitial spaces. You can see here that these guys are no longer lined up nearly as nicely. Um, and so if I were to try to move these guys over, it would cause a break in, the, uh, in this material. There's one more type of, um, of alloy, and that's whenever you just straight up replace an iron with something of a similar radius so something about the same size like i don't know cobalt or something like that where you have iron and cobalt together and then it's going to change things up how is it going to change things up uh, again you bring go go back to your coulomb's law so you have the change in charge so you would go through and look to see what kind of charges you can have here. Then you can also look at radius. If this is just a little bit smaller, then that's going to cause these guys to be all close together, which is going to increase the strength. If it's... So if the this atom is a little bit larger, it's going to push everything apart and kind of disrupt those forces by making the distances a little bit larger. I'm going to continue on with these, hopefully about once a day. And I will see you guys tomorrow.